चार्ली चैपलिन कॉमेडी विद हार्ट एंड सोल सर चार्ल्स स्पेंसर चैपलिन जे आर के बी सोलह अप्रैल अठारह सौ नवासी पच्चीस दिसंबर उन्नीस सौ सतहत्तर वॉज एन इंग्लिश ह्यूमरिस्ट हु यूज टू प्रोड्यूस मूवीज एंड अ म्यूजिशियन नोन ड्यूरिंग द क्वाइट मूवी पीरियड पीपल कंसिडर हिम वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट पीपल इन द सिनेमा इंडस्ट्री बिकॉज ऑफ हिज मूवी पर्सोना द ट्रैम्प Beginning his childhood in the Victorian period until a year prior to his demise in 1977, his profession spread over 75 years and was set apart by both veneration and disagreement. Childhood. Charles Spencer Chaplin was brought into the world on 16th April 1889 in London, England. His dad was a talented singer and entertainer, and his mom, who went by the stage name Lily Hurley. was a delightful actress and vocalist who rose to unmistakable quality in the light drama world as a result of his dad's initial passing and his mom's ensuing sickness charlie and his sibling sydney had to battle for themselves before the age of 10 the teenagers saw the stage as the finest possibility for a profession after inheriting natural gifts from their parents Charlie made his expert introduction as an individual from the Eight Lancashire Lads an adolescent gathering and immediately laid down a good foundation for himself as a skilled tap artist beginning of his profession he had his first chance to act in a genuine theatrical show when he was approximately 12 years old when he played Billy the page boy in support of H A Sainsbury and subsequently William Gillette in several productions of Sherlock Holmes. After this agreement finished, Charlie started a profession as a vaudeville comic, which drove him to the United States in 1910 as highlighted player with the Fred Carno Company. He became an instant hit with American audiences thanks to his performance in the sketch A night in an English music hall Chaplin was offered a movie bargain when the Fred Carno group got back to the United States in the fall of 1912 for a recurrent visit. At the point when his vaudeville contracts terminated in November 1913, he at long last assented to go before the cameras and he joined Max Sennett and the Keystone Film Company that month. His original weekly wage was $150. but his instant success on film prompted other producers to begin negotiations for his services chaplin continued to work the sna company 1915 in the wake of completing his agreement with the senet company sydney chaplin had arrived from england and had taken over as keystone's star comedian from his brother Charlie was in such high demand the next year that he secured a contract with the Mutual Film Corporation for a far bigger price to film 12 to real comedies. The Floor Walker, The Vagabond, The Fireman and 1 AM. A creation wherein he was the main person for the whole to reels with the exception of the entry of a taxi driver in the initial scene and much more. Getting feet on the ground. Chaplin needed to turn into an autonomous maker after his agreement with Mutual terminated in 1917 to have more opportunity and recreation in making his movies. In order to achieve this, he set about building his own studios. This facility was located on La Brea Avenue in the center of Hollywood's residential district. Early in 1918, Chaplin signed a deal with the first national exhibitors circuit a new company created specifically to commercialize his films A Dog's Life was his debut film under this new contract Following this creation he went on a public visit on the side of the conflict exertion after which he shot The Bond a film that the US government used to promote the Liberty Loan push His next business endeavor was the development of a war related comedy Shoulder Arms released at an opportune moment in 1918 was a true mirth quake at the movie office boosting Chaplin's reputation considerably Shoulder Arms was trailed by Sunny Side and A Day's Pleasure the two of which were delivered in 1919 
Griffith formed the United Artists Corporation with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and D.W. Griffith. In his book, History of the Movies, B.B. Hampton expresses, United Artists was coordinated as a wholesaler, with every one of the specialists keeping up with unlimited oversight over their individual creating exercises and conveying finished pictures to United Artists for dissemination on the similar general arrangement they would have followed with a circulating association they didn't poses. The originators behind United Artists were given an equivalent portion of the organization's capital. The industry was introduced to a new way as a result of this arrangement. Producers and distributors have previously been the employers, stars are compensated with salary and, in some cases, a portion of the earnings. The stars became their own bosses under the United Artists regime. They had to raise their own funds, but they got producer earnings that had previously gone to their employers, as well as a percentage of the distributing organization's profits. The Kid Unniso Ikkis Be that as it may, Chaplin needed to complete his agreement with First National before he could begin working for United Artists. So right on time in 1921, he delivered The Kid, a six-reel exemplary in which he acquainted with the film one of the world's most noteworthy young entertainers, Jackie Coogan. Chaplin then flew to Europe in September 1921 feeling the need for a total break from his motion picture pursuits. He received a thunderous welcome in London, Paris, Berlin, and other European towns. Chaplin returned to Hollywood after a long holiday to restart his film profession and begin his active association with United Artists. Chaplin made eight full-length films under his agreement with UA in the accompanying request. The Masterpiece Releases 1. A Woman of Paris, 1923 Charles Chaplin's film, A Woman of Paris, was a bold move in his career. He made a movie in which he just showed up for a couple of moments as an unbilled and unrecognizable extra, a watchman at a railroad station, in the wake of coordinating 70 pictures in which he showed up in each scene. As of not long ago, every film had been a parody. A Woman of Paris was a romantic tale. This was not an impromptu choice. Chaplin had long wanted to take a stab at coordinating a serious film. Though, the gold rush, Unni saw Pachis. Chaplin tried to keep his professional and personal life distinct in general, but the two became inexorably and brutally intermingled in this case. He rediscovered Lilitha McMurray whom he had given a role as a 12-year-old in The Kid while searching for another primary lady. Lilitha was put under the agreement and renamed Leto Gray while she was still younger than 16. Leto found she was pregnant when the movie was six months into filming after Chaplin began a secret romance with her. Chaplin was constrained into a marriage that brought the two mates distress, notwithstanding the way that it got to children. Charles J.R., furthermore, Sidney Chaplin. Teen, The Circus, Unni saw a thais. The Circus earned Charles Chaplin his first Academy Award, which was not yet known as the Oscar, which he received at the first awards ceremony in 1929. However, even as late as 1964, it created the impression that this was a film he would prefer to neglect. The justification for this was not the actual film, but rather the very troublesome conditions in which it was made. Chaplin was going through a separation with Leto Gray, and the arrival of the circus corresponded with perhaps the most repulsive and shocking separation in 20s Hollywood, as Leto's legal counselors had a go at everything they could to obliterate Chaplin's standing. As if his domestic woes were not bad enough, the movie seemed doomed to failure in every way. Following quite a while of endeavouring to fail to remember it, Chaplin got back to the circus in the last part of the 1960s to redischarge it with another melodic score of his own piece.
It appeared to be a symbol of his reconciliation with the film that had caused him so much anxiety. Char City Lights 1931 City Lights ended up being Chaplin's most troublesome and tedious venture. He had burned through 2 years and 8 months on the undertaking when it was done with around 190 days of real shooting. The amazing thing is that the final product bears little resemblance to the labor and anguish that went into it. The sound film was well established even before he started City Lights. This new revolution presented Chaplin with a greater challenge than other silent film stars. His tramp persona was well known. His mime may be understood all around the world. Nonetheless, in the event that the tramp began talking in English, his worldwide crowd would promptly decrease. Chaplin intensely tackled the issue through previous discourse and made City Lights a quiet picture, similar to what he had consistently finished previously. He stunned the press and the general public. However, by writing the whole music for city lights all of chaplin's problems and worries seemed to be offset by the picture which is today regarded as the pinnacle of his career and reputation part modern times 1936 chaplin was profoundly worried about the social and monetary issues of his time He had left Hollywood in 1931 and 1932 to set out on an 18-month globe visit. He had been worried by the growth of nationalism in Europe as well as the social impacts of the depression, unemployment, and automation. Chaplin set out to turn his insights and fears into humor in modern times. Destitution, joblessness, strikes and strike breakers, political narrow-mindedness, monetary disparities the oppression of the machine opiates the little tramp depicted in the film credits as a factory worker is presently one of the large numbers adapting to the issues of the 1930s which are not so different from nerves of the 21st 100 years neediness joblessness strikes and strike breakers political prejudice financial imbalances che the great dictator 1940 Chaplin was essentially as well known as Hitler when he composed The Great Dictator in 1939 and his tramp character had something very similar mustache He intended to match his fame and wit against the dictator's own fame and cruelty He benefited on the off chance that that is the legitimate term given the times from his notoriety as a Jew which he was not He said I despise that joy. Chaplin plays two characters in the film, a Jewish stylist who lost his memory in a plane accident during World War 1 and went through years in a medical clinic prior to being delivered into a prejudiced country he doesn't have any idea, and Hinkel, the tyrant of Tomania, whose militaries are the powers of the double cross, who will go to any length to boost his chances of becoming the world's monarch. Chaplin's goal is clear and the picture concludes with the barber giving a now famous and humanistic statement in Chaplin's own words. Sat Monsieur Verdux 1947 Orson Welles proposed the idea as a proposition for a dramatized documentary about the renowned French murderer Henri Desire Landeru who was killed in 1922 after killing at least 10 people two dogs and one boy. Chaplin was so taken with the concept that he offered Wells $5000 for. The contract was signed in 1941, but it took Chaplin another 4 years to finish the script. Meanwhile, his phenomenally successful marriage to Una O'Neill had compensated for the distracting diversions of a much publicized and acrimonious paternity suit. Chaplin, as an outsider with liberal and humanist feelings, was an ideal objective for political witch trackers in the last part of the 1940s when America's cold war suspicion arrived at its zenith this marked the beginning of chaplin's final and unhappiest year in the united states which he would leave permanently in 1952 art limelight 1952 
With this solid inclination of wistfulness, Chaplin endeavoured to reproduce the London he recollected from 50 years sooner. And it is clear from the film's primer notes that the personality of Calvero had a youth that was strikingly like Chaplin's own. Spotlight's account of a once popular music corridor entertainer who no longer winds up engaging might have been personal as a horrible situation. Sidney Chaplin plays the young, gifted pianist who competes with Calvero for the young ballerina's heart, and other members of the Chaplin family also appear in the film. Chaplin heard that his re-entry pass to the United States had been revoked while on the boat with his family to the London premiere of Limelight, based on claims about his morals and politics. As a result, Chaplin stayed in Europe with his family, settling at the Manoir de Ban in Corsier sur Veve, Switzerland, with a view of the lake and Alps. What a contrast to California! He and Una had four additional children bringing their total to eight. Last year, Chaplin excelled at writing, music, and sports. He wrote four volumes in total, including My Trip Abroad, A Comedian Sees the World, My Autobiography, and My Life in Pictures, in addition to his general writings. He was a talented musician who was self-taught and could play a number of instruments with equal proficiency, playing violin and cello left-handed. His music accomplishments include the soundtracks for all of his films as well as Sing a Song, With You Dear in Bombay, There Is Always One You Cannot Forget, Grin, Unceasingly, and You Are My Song. He also composed music. With the exception of A Countess from Hong Kong, Charles Chaplin was one of the few comedians to write, act in, direct, and composed the music for all of his films in addition to financing and producing them. He died on Christmas Day 1977, abandoning one child from his short union with Leto Gray and eight youngsters from his past association with Una O'Neill. Dear viewers, We have tried our best to provide you an informative video. Please comment that how did you find this video because your comments and opinion are very important to us. If you like this video please subscribe our channel and give a thumb up so that you may be updated for our every effort regarding upcoming video. Take care of your good self.